Hi, I'm Birgit O'Connor, and today I'd like to show you how to paint a simple little barn by using suggestion rather than a lot of detail. What's going to be fun about painting this little barn is that we're going to be using both hard and soft edges. Let's first take a look at the reference photo and how to hold your brush. One thing that I'm going to want to do instead of holding the brush vertically is hold it more horizontally so it catches the tooth of the paper. At the moment what I'm using is a number 20 Sable Synthetic Blend. And the colors I'll be using are a French Ultramarine Blue Burnt Sienna Mix. But first let's take a look at how I'm going to create the texture for that rusted roof and side of the barn. The texture will all depend on how much water and color I have on the brush and how flat I'm holding it. This is what you call a dry brush technique, a fairly dry brush on dry paper. It's also going to depend on how much pressure I'm applying to my brush stroke. If I have too much water and press harder, I'm not going to get the effect that I'm looking for. I'm using a Sable Synthetic Blend because if I used a natural brush, I could easily overdo it with too much water. And if I held my brush vertically, you can see the difference in the stroke. So let's get started. To keep it simple, and to help you feel more successful, I'll be using an eighth of a sheet of 300 pound cold press arches paper. You can also use 140 pound cold press or pad paper for this painting. I'm first going to create a simple drawing to help give me a guide of where I want to work. If I wanted straighter lines, I could always use a ruler, but this doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, imperfection can really add to a painting. It's okay if you're not great at drawing. We're going to keep it simple, and the most important thing is to have fun with this. I really don't need all the details, I just need an idea of the placement of where I'm putting my barn. I'll begin by adding water to the sky area. Notice the glisten. I want enough water so when I apply color it's going to be able to move. And for the moment I want to keep my barn area dry. You can also see the pencil line boundary around my image. This helps to create a framework for my painting. Using my number 14 Sable Synthetic Blend and my blue-gray combination of French Ultramarine Blue and a little Burnt Sienna, I'll add it to the top line and work my way across to the other side. I'm starting to think about the trees in the background, and I notice a little sky through the branches. So to help me get that effect, I'm going to use my number 8 Round Sable Synthetic Blend and just apply a little bit of the sky color around the edge of the barn. The reason why I changed my brush size is because if I used the number 14 I could easily add too much color and lose a little bit of my atmosphere and soft clouds. Now while the surface is still wet I'm going to use a little permanent sap green and mix in a little burnt sienna and drop it into the background along the roof line of the barn. Try to notice the glisten on the surface. It's not matte, it's not a puddle, it's still shiny. You can also see that I'm not painting in the trees. I'm dabbing the color here and there randomly. At this point, I'm going to start thinking about what are the colors that I want to use in my barn. I'm also not thinking about each individual board, but how I can create the effect, because if I add too much detail, that can be a problem. It can easily look overworked. The other choice is do I want to use a flat brush or a round? With a flat brush, I can easily get a straight line and cover an area quickly. You can use a one inch flat, or what I have here is a number 20 wash modeler. The color I'll be using is a little burnt sienna. And to get the texture that I want, I'll be applying the color to dry paper. So basically, dry on dry. 
I can see that a little bit of the background color is bleeding into the red of the barn, which is just fine, because it helps to create lost edges. For the side, which is basically in shadow, I'll want a little glow and texture, so I need to apply a little color here too. You can really see how the texture is being created by the tooth of the paper. Now remember that has to do with the pressure that I'm applying and the amount of water and color I have on the brush, which isn't much. To prevent the color from looking flat, I'm going to incorporate a little more French ultramarine blue and let the two mingle. And to help balance the building out, I'm going to do a little bit of the same thing to the side. Now for the roof, I'll be using the same dry brush technique and my French Ultramarine Blue Burnt Sienna Mix, only in a very, very light value. I'm hardly adding any color here, and to help get the lines of the metal roof, using a flat brush really helps. The other nice thing about using a flat brush is that when I want to get the lines, they're a little more broken and they're not so exact. I'm also really liking how the trees in the background are starting to bleed down into the roof, helping to create a lost edge. By having that softer edge, it really helps prevent this barn from just looking like a shape sitting on the paper. Notice how I'm just trying to give the impression of some grasses. I'm not trying to paint every blade, only just the impression of it. I'm also leaving a large white area in the center of the grass because that's where I'm going to have my pond and build reflections. But before I do that, I'm going to need to let the surface dry just a little bit. So while I'm waiting, I'm going to work on the shadow on the side of the barn. I'll be using the same French Ultramarine Blue's Burnt Sienna Mix, but only in a darker value, meaning less water and more pigment. Using the flat brush, I'll define the roof line. I'm trying to create contrast between the roof and the shadow. When working on landscapes, and especially barns or houses, flat brushes work really well. As I'm applying the shadow color, I want to be careful that it's not just one value. Otherwise, it can be flat and distracting. In the photograph, you can see that it does appear as one giant dark shape. But if I did that in the painting, that's the only place your eye is going to go to. For easier access in the smaller area, I'm going to switch over to my number 8 Sable Synthetic Blend. Then using my flat brush and clean water, I'm going to draw the shadow down into the grass. It won't look much different, but by using the clean water, you're able to build more transparency in the color, which allows you to see the wooden barn underneath. Going back to my semi-dry roof, I'm going to apply color with the edge of my brush going in the direction of the roof line. Notice how I'm not painting the color on, just touching the paper. And by simply changing the angle of the brush, I can give the impression of different texture. Then using the same technique, I'll turn my brush, create a different angle, and apply the boards to the side of my barn. To help unify these two sides and help them look like they both belong in the same building, I'm going to incorporate some of my shadow color onto this side too. And to help give the building just a little more depth, I'll place a little shadow line just under the edge of the roof. Now before I start working in the background and on those trees again, I'd like you to notice how much water I have in my palette. I can always pull water from the puddle into the color, or use the lighter value with all the water in it. To help give a little more dimension to the background and definition between trees, I'll dab a little bit of my palette mud here and there. And since the surface is still damp, but not wet, I have a diffusion of color. It doesn't appear like a hard dry line. 
and to push the building away from the background, I need to darken the value. The intention is not to recreate a photograph, but rather capture the essence of what we see. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to have a little pond here, so what I need to do is bring some of the barn color down into the reflection on the water. Try not to add too much detail. You're only trying to create an impression. Long sweeping strokes. Then bring some of the brown of the side of the barn down into the water too. For those last few details, while the paper is still damp, using a sharp edge, score the paper to create the impression of trees. You want the damp color on the surface to be able to run back into the scarred paper. So this is all we really need to do to create a really nice painting. There doesn't need to be a lot of detail. We're just creating the impression and the essence of what we see. So until next time, happy painting. For more information on my books, DVDs, and workshops, please visit my website, birgitoconnor.com.